So earlier this week, I did a video wondering why the WWE was having AJ Styles face Jinder Mahal on a taped edition of SmackDown in Manchester, England. Because it seemed like it was something that was being rushed together, thrown together at the last minute. Like, it wasn't even announced officially on TV the week before. They announced it via social media. So, I thought, I thought, this was some type of excuse to get a ratings pop while giving Jinder some type of signature victory heading into his match against Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. Because I didn't really see where we would be calling an audible all of a sudden after all this time of Mahal being the champion and actually having already gone down the path of Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal, I just didn't see where this company was going to change direction so quickly before Survivor Series. Ding dong, I was wrong. Dead ass wrong. As we all know, Tuesday on SmackDown, AJ Styles did beat Jinder Mahal, and he is now your new WWE Champion. He's back to being the face that runs the place, and he is now positioned to face Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. And, as you can imagine, the reaction has been very positive from the wrestling fandom standpoint. Uh, I think a lot of people were dreading the thought of Lesnar versus Mahal at Survivor Series. I know I had talked previously about how much of a joke of a match I thought that it really was, and that this was going to be your marquee match, potentially your main event match, and that's what you're giving us at a Big Four pay-per-view? Give me a break. And apparently the WWE came to their senses on this, realized it, and completely agreed, and said we could do Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal, or we could do Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles, and they went down the AJ Styles path. So you can imagine there's a much more positive reaction to this. There is much more excitement now about Survivor Series amongst a lot of fans because now they feel like they're getting a quasi-type of dream matchup, I guess, between Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles, which to me, I still kind of have to fart at, honestly, because the only thing I see an AJ Styles-Brock Lesnar match for is to try and knock Lesnar down to size a little bit for a future potential Finn Balor match at the Royal Rumble, maybe? Ugh. If Finn Balor facing Brock Lesnar is a complete joke and lacks believability, and yes, it does, AJ Styles isn't a whole lot better from a size component, and, and honestly, that's a big deal when it comes to Lesnar, especially when you look at some of the guys he's been working with this year. The Braun Strowman's, the Samoa Joe's, the Roman freaking Reigns, as he goes from those guys, bigger dudes, and in the case of Strowman, an absolute giant, to wrestling AJ Styles. Now, you can say, based off of AJ Styles' legacy, his career, his pedigree, his match quality, you can get away with that, and I do kind of agree with that assessment, but... I am calling out, so that way I'm not called hypocritical, because if I didn't, I should be called that. It's not that much different from a size perspective than him wrestling Finn Balor. Just saying. But I get it. And honestly, making this decision, making this move, has me a little more interested in Survivor Series 2. Now at least I see a champion versus champion match, and you could just go with it. Now it still sets up the thing of, if Lesnar loses, how stupid did they look? Or if AJ Styles loses, then you've just crapped on the guy with really the top belt because it's the WWE title on your B, excuse me, B show. You've made him look like a B show champion. So I still have concerns about that match the similar way I would have if it was Lesnar and Mahal. Because no matter what, there could be some type of negative result. Or in the grand scheme of things, it might not matter. And it very well is possible that it just doesn't matter. Because I know a lot of people are going to point to the ratings bump and the viewership bump they got out of this show on SmackDown Tuesday with the results being, the show being taped, with the spoilers being leaked out. And people knew ahead of time that AJ Styles was going to win the title, so it was an impetus for them to tune in. But the reality is... While they had almost a half million more viewers than they had for the Halloween episode, that is also a holiday episode, Halloween, and you know those episodes traditionally perform very poorly from a viewership and ratings standpoint. And the fact is, even with it being spoiled and leaked out ahead of time that AJ Styles was going to win the belt, 
the viewership numbers were about the same as two weeks ago. So you're going to hear that narrative that it was a big pop in the ratings, but it was a pop in the ratings compared to a holiday episode that brought it back to the level it was two weeks ago when, oh, by the way, Jinder Mahal was the WWE champion. Other factors at play, sure, but I'm just saying, let's not celebrate this like AJ Styles was some big viewership draw because the simple fact of the matter is, based off of the numbers in him winning the title and that result being leaked out ahead of time, it was not. And I still come back to the fundamental question of why the hell did the WWE go down this path? Why did they do it? Because to me, you've gone this far this long with Jinder Mahal as the champion. To me, he's the type of guy that if you're already pounding him and you're already forcing him, why would you not continue to do so to where you get to that point, whether it be at a big show like a Survivor Series, a Royal Rumble, a WrestleMania then you have the perfect opportunity to have some baby face come in and squash them very quickly and win the title that way and you get a big huge pop and you get a lot of impact. Having a Jinder Mahal wrestle a competitive match against an AJ Styles on a taped Tuesday Smackdown doesn't seem like the best way to have Jinder hand off that strap. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Then we also get back to the simple fact of the WWE changed their world title a couple of weeks before a Big Four pay-per-view just to set up something for a Big Four pay-per-view, and it was a tape show. This is the type of crap that for years we pounded TNA incessantly and relentlessly for, and honestly, we should have. WCW, throughout the scope of history, gets pounded for doing stuff like this. As they should have, even though it was live. They would do world title changes right before pay-per-views just to change it right back. And then to drop it and then do this and the hot potato garbage and so forth. WWE deserves to be pounded for this. If you were going to have Jinder Mahal lose the strap, why wouldn't you do that on the WWE Network where people are expected to pay for it? It furthermore validates what I'm talking about is why would anybody bother subscribing to the WWE Network paying the $9.99 a month when most of the relevant important shit that happens with that company happens on the television that you get as part of your cable package on the USA Network? This is just further indication that the pay-per-views don't freaking matter. Because they don't. Because even when you go into Survivor Series, it's a bunch of champion versus champion. And in a lot of cases, you have heels versus heels. And even when you saw this past Monday on Raw, they had the bar win the tag champion, so that way they could split off Ambrose and Rollins to do something with the Shield, probably against the New Day at Survivor Series. Now even the tag title matches, the Usos versus the bar, is another heel versus heel. Alexa versus Natalia. The Miz versus Baron Corbin. It's just really strange that this company would head into a big four pay-per-view with so many heel versus heel matchups and kind of overdoing it, it could potentially make it hard for fans to get behind certain guys because who are you in theory supposed to get behind but in the grand scheme of things again I guess it doesn't freaking matter and at least the one thing with Lesnar and Mahal you would have had one of those instances where the fans could clearly rally and unite behind one guy and it could really help make a match now granted you could get that Lesnar AJ Styles kind of buzz where it just feels like a big deal and it doesn't really matter that's true but I do like those matches where you have that one clear person that you're supposed to root for, that one clear person that you're supposed to not, and now we don't really have that with Lesnar versus AJ Styles unless you just don't like that meathead Lesnar. But why would you sit there and do this title change overseas on a taped SmackDown for a cheap ratings pop that really wasn't a ratings pop at all? All to sit there and say, well, we're going to get to Lesnar versus Styles at Survivor Series, and that's the more appealing match. If that was the more appealing match, then Mahal should have never been your damn champion to begin with. But now that he was, it's more important to make him as viable or credible as a champion as you possibly could. The simple fact is the WWE only made Jinder Mahal champion for two reasons. One was because he blew up and gassed his ass up, and two, because of his skin color. It's like the anti-black phenomenon of WWE. This company will literally go out of its way. If you are Hispanic, Latin, or Indian, they will force the belt on you because of your race. Whereas if you're black, you can make an argument that they will keep the belt off of you. 
because of your race. It is one of the weirdest, screwiest freaking things in the world. And maybe from a business standpoint, you could justify and say, even though Jinder Mahal is Canadian, that since you market him as Indian and his character is coming across as Indian, you're trying to appeal to the second most populous country in the entire world in India with over 1.3 billion people. And that is this huge, potentially untapped market of great resources. And it is something even if domestic audience continues to decline, if you build up this space, it's not going to matter to hella beans. And in theory, that sounds true. But if a lot of the people in India, which when you have a population that is that large, you're deal talking about total population versus effective population that could actually viably afford your product and would actually get into your product. And those numbers are entirely different. As Shane found out when he went off into the business world outside of WWE work for a Chinese based broadband company and he realized just because you have about a billion and a half people doesn't automatically guarantee that your company is going to be successful. Because a lot of that population lives in squalor. They live in poverty, in worse than poverty type of situations. But with that said, you've went this far with Jinder Mahal as a champion. You didn't put the belt on Nakamura. If you were going to do that, then you should have put the damn belt on Nakamura. Furthermore, next month you've got the Indian tour coming up where they're performing a couple of times in what New Delhi. Now you're going to send Jinder Mahal over there as not the WWE champion? Why would you undercut the guy right before this massive international tour? I just don't freaking get it unless you're going to tell me that you're going to have Jinder win the strap back on that tour, which you may, but you probably won't. In that case, if that was a decision that you made, then why would you undercut the guy's heat here? Why not market him and promote him as the champion going into that tour next month and give the people there a reason to really come out and support this guy? It's like they undercut the heat because they didn't believe in the champion, the champion that they only put in place because of those two factors that I just mentioned. It's crazy to me just to sit there and get to Lesnar and AJ Styles. It's whatever. Because I'm going to be honest, in the grand scheme of things, as you think about it more and more, as much as we talk about it, it does matter when it talks about booking and character development and storylines and so on and so forth. But the simple fact of the matter is, in terms of the current WWE reality, it just doesn't matter that much. Because their ratings can't drop much more than what they currently are. They kind of hover around that same number, and they have been for a little while. They very slowly decrease, and you bleed off a little here and there, but it's only a small siphoning off, not a huge plummeting like we sometimes like to make it out to believe. But you could say, well, AJ Styles winning the belt was awesome and spectacular. And if you enjoyed the moment, then good for you. Like I said, it at least gives me a more interesting champion versus champion match at Survivor Series. I will say that. But that said, this was not some big time viewership or ratings pop. This is not something that's going to have any major significant impact on the WWE's attendance figures for SmackDown, their ratings overall, their viewership numbers, their overall bottom line. It's just not. And the simple fact is, is the shit just doesn't matter. And more specifically, the pay-per-views don't matter on the WWE Network. Because now we're going into a show that there really are no reasons, no consequence, nothing at stake for the entire show. It's just the whole element of being an old bragging rights type of pay-per-view where it's Raw versus freaking SmackDown. Well, at some point in time, you would think something is at stake. And don't just say, well, Kurt Angle might get fired by Stephanie if Team Raw loses. Because that's not a good enough stake for the entire premise of the freaking pay-per-view. And Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles is, again, another match with no real stake. It's no real purpose. This is just video game fucking booking. Why would you feel the need to have to watch Survivor Series when you feel like legitimately and realistically and rightfully that nothing of significance is going to happen? Furthermore, why would I bother subscribing to a network and watching a pay-per-view when I could just tune into Raw or SmackDown and I see the biggest, most notable things. The SmackDown evasion of Raw. AJ Styles winning the belt on a taped show. Why would you watch the network? Again, it gives you maybe a little bit of a bigger anticipation point, a little bit more thrill. AJ Styles the champion. Skip to skip, whoop de woo. Now you avoid Lesnar versus Mahal at Survivor Series. Maybe that's a positive. It's just a really puzzling thing. But in the grand scheme of things... It really doesn't fucking matter, I guess.